Well, hello there. Aren't I blessed hey, to be to be sandwiched between this beautiful masculine energy? Hello, Tom. Hello, Christo. <laughs> <laughs> good morning or good afternoon now. Good afternoon on 3222. Here we are. Another day with two. In month number three, I can't <clears throat> we are in March already. Wow, it is March. Oh my goodness, how amazing, how amazing that we are moving right along through this year, this year. Transformation. So we have lots, lots and lots going on in the world. Mm. Look at that beautiful blue background, Christo. Yes, it helps to increase my calmness. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? You got a calm life. <laughs> well, I mean, that's just it reinforces it even more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so fun. I'm going to give it another minute, but I wanted to um, share, and I'll, I'll say it again when we uh, towards the end of this this uh, transmission, but I I am feeling complete with these Wednesday calls as they are. I'm going to find another way where we can reach more people because the the creating it on Zoom and putting it on on YouTube is not quite getting the um, the traction that I thought it would because my guidance says I've got to keep doing this, but I've got to do it differently. So I will notify everybody if how this changes, whether it's uh, in, in uh, what is that called, um, Instagram, which means everybody would have to have an Instagram account and you just go there to watch. It'd be like going to a link in Instagram, like going to a link on Zoom, or I'm going to do them as YouTube lives. And so I've got to find out how that works so that then I can do them live on YouTube. But I think between coming here to Zoom and then posting it, there, there's something about that transition that is just not getting the, the attention. You know, somehow the, the people that I message that know about it and the, the actual um, more people finding it on, on YouTube, it's not working because I am getting so much, um, oh my goodness, I, I'm just being guided in a way that is really, really amazing. I, I knew early on in my journey that I was being guided by the essence of the Christ consciousness. It felt like Jesus talking to me pretty much. That was my primary guide through the bulk of my, my journey. Then it shifted to uh, a course of miracles, which of course is still Jesus guiding me, but I wasn't having that, that, dialogue that that connection to to Jesus in the same way I was receiving his teachings from the course and then of course a course of love and way of mastery and all those other books and now that I'm reading the Christ letters it's so so clear to me that everything has been preparing me to awaken my Christ itself and, and be, just, just be the Christ consciousness teaching. I don't need to have Jesus channeling through me. The, the Christedness in me is the Christ in him. It's all one and the same. And there doesn't need to be a distinction. And I, last night, as a matter of fact, I woke up around 1.30 in the morning and I couldn't go back to sleep. I, I was but it, it wasn't like I was restless and, and I couldn't, and it was uh, uncomfortable. Oh my God, I don't have those thoughts. When I wake up in the middle of the night, I always know that there's a divine appointment in there somewhere. And I just, just followed, you know, what I was supposed to do, the nudges. And I was guided to just, just stay in bed and go into a meditative state so that if, if I meditate and I'm laying down, I typically fall asleep. I rarely can meditate laying down um, and it'd be uh, a, a full-blown meditation that I'm conscious of, but I know that if I fall asleep while I'm meditating, I'm entering another realm and it's part of the meditation, but it's just not one I'm conscious of. 
Anyways, I could not um, fall asleep, even though I, I was in a meditative state. And oh my goodness, I'm feeling choked up. Um, I began to feel the presence um, as I was there saying, no, you're not going to fall asleep. You, we're going to connect. We're going to, we're just going to connect. And then I heard I needed to get out of bed and go downstairs and just, just connect with in, in meditation, sitting up. And I had a beautiful, beautiful experience. Um, probably one of maybe three or four times, no more than a handful of meditative experiences when the awareness of even Lina just dissolves. And there is a knowingness of, of connection with all that isness. And it's, it's that point, if you guys have experienced this, you know when I say this, is that point, that paradox, when all that isness and nothingness merge and it, it's, it's just, uh, it's sublime. It, that, that's the only, I can see why people call it bliss because it is sublime. It's, it's beyond anything that the mind can um, conjure up. And so it's nothing that you can plan to do. You can't make an appointment to go to the, the intersection of all that isness and nothingness and um, expect to find something there because there's nothing there. It's nothingness. But when it happens spontaneously, the allness that one feels that I felt is so is so peaceful because that's that's where you know all is well. That's where you know none of this human stuff is real. Is is where you feel one in the mind of God like a dream, like in lucid dreaming. When you're dreaming and there are people in your head, it feels real like the tiger is chasing you or like you are driving the car or you are flying um, and in the sky, you, all of that appears to be really real, but it's just imagination. So when we enter into that, that merger with the, the mind that imagines you, the you that is being imagined has to dissolve because you're experiencing the you that imagines. And when you experience the you that is the creator, that is imagining when there, that merger happens in that space of merging, you know, everything is imagined. So wars happening, um, sunsets, sunrises, the dolphins jumping over the water, the children being abused, it's all in imagination. And, and you can't help but be in awe of the mind that imagines infinite potentials, all of them. But when the mind, human mind that is being imagined says, this is what I am, this is all that is, it's as if you freeze what you're experiencing and you solidify it, it densifies and it becomes so real and when, when done, as we do in the 3D world and community, and other people talk about the same thing, then you begin to, to completely think that what's out there is real. And you forget, not only are you being imagined, but you are one with the mind that imagines everything. So you forget to have access to the mind that can imagine something different. And the Course in Miracles has taught me that all minds are joined. Okay, now I get, this morning I was told I couldn't continue the lesson that we had started the previous week, that I had to come to lesson number 19. Now I know why. Um, and the title of lesson 19 is, I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my thoughts. So as I am in that state of realizing I'm just a thought in the mind of God. God is imagining me, but I and God are one. So I'm imagining me, imagining God. And once 
once we enter into that, that realm where there is this total and complete merging of your thoughts and God's thoughts, and now there's no distinction between the two and the I and the Father, Mother, God are one, begins to happen in that place, there is an activation of, of awareness that says, well, if I, if I am the one imagining it, why would I want to imagine anything that creates suffering? Why not imagine a happy dream as the Course in Miracles teaches, a happy dream where we all live from our hearts? To get to that place where we co-create a happy dream together, we must first come to the place of acknowledging that we are being dreamt by divine mind. And when we merge with divine mind and understand that it is a benevolent mind, that it is, it's really, God is, is nothing but the mind of a child, a happy, joyful, unrestricted child that is in infinite imagination. That's why there is so much that we don't even know. We are limited by what we see on planet earth or what little bit we see through a telescope or through footage of of, um, you know, landings on wherever. But that is, as I was connecting with infinite mind um, early this morning, you know, two, three in the morning, we know one dot of the potential. We know 0.0001%. The infinite mind didn't create planet earth and run out of ideas. And then it scattered a few little, you know, creative points out there. Planet earth is one tiny speck inside of all that infinite mind has created and will continue to create. And our work when we are waking up is to tap into that infinite mind. So we stop doing the same thing with the same mind that gives us the insanity that we are experiencing on planet earth. And planet Earth, with the inhabitants of this planet conditioned to believe that what is out there is real, cannot, cannot co-create something different until they transcend that mind, which means they need to end the trance that they're in, believing that that is what is real, and open up their mind to tapping to the creative mind. And that's a process of surrender that is very difficult for one who is attached to, I, I know everything. So to surrender to the all-knowing mind, it's a process of humbling ourselves. I mean, I was in tears last night when I am feeling fully, fully tiny, a speck of knowledge as I am merging into the mind that knows all that is. You, you can't enter into all that is if you think you know it all, because the knowing all is a barrier, it's a block, it's a shutting the door and you lock yourself in a, in a box and then I know it all and this is my box, no matter how pretty your box is, no matter how many you know additions you've made to your box, it will never, ever, ever, be more than a speck of what is possible by design, by design, so that we can experience this box fully and realize that no matter how pretty we make it on planet Earth, if it doesn't have love at its core, it's not going to be sustainable because it is not God's design. It is our blocking of the flow of the divine mind to allow everything to express itself. You see, boxes is what the ego does best. And boxes are blocks, are confinements, are controls. So when we are controlling another person, we're attempting to put them in a box because we have an idea of who they are. And our idea of who they are is based on who we think we are. And as we box other people in, it's because we're just simply perpetuating the box that we are in, which is inside of the societal box. And that societal box, we've been, we've been replaying the same old broken record for, for many, many lifetimes. 
And merging into the mind of God is literally a decision to liberate oneself from the box. And for, for, many, for many people, there is a moment in their life experience when that box dissolves and all of a sudden they're connected. For most people that happens through maybe taking drugs, um, maybe plant medicine. I know, it, I know I experienced it when I had my ayahuasca experience and then, you know, it was the same, same thing. I got to see everything and all I could do was laugh at the insanity. Um, I literally laughed for like four hours, belly laughing, just gut hurting, belly laughing at the insanity of how smart we think we are when we really actually know nothing. We, we know nothing, but we think we know it all. And that, that humbleness and surrender to the possibility that we know nothing, it's not even a possibility, the actuality that we really don't know much, that requires a mind that is either distracted through drugs or, or um, you know, plant medicine or something transcendental that, that, that happens, it just happens, or it is a mind that is trained and a mind that is trained to connect with God is a mind that has been trained to not think by itself. It has been trained to allow itself to be thought because we don't create ourselves. Course in Miracles is really clear. There's only one difference between us and God. God created us. And God created us to create. Yes, we create, but we can't create ourselves. So once you are clear that you don't create yourself, that awareness, so you got you to gotta be comfortable that you're not just your mother and father's child, that you're not just biology, that you're not just a chemical factory, that you are literally the conception of a thought a desire to experience a being to love. And when we allow ourselves to be the imagination of God, I don't know about you when you were a little child, but I remember when I was a little girl, I used to want to play with my baby dolls and I would imagine that I was their mommy and I was taking care of them and, and I had my little pets and I was, I, I was the best mommy in the whole, I just wanted to love on them. It wasn't until I got later in my years and I was more conditioned that I would spank my dolls because I had been spanked. But until that shift happened where I was doing to others what was done unto me, I was in a state of pure, innocent love. We all are. We all are born that way. Then we get conditioned out of that. And when, when we can return to that truth of who we are, there is a stripping away of all the conditioning. What you're not has to fall away. For most of us, it is decades of practicing, choosing a different thought, shifting and lifting to high frequency thought, having a thought of how can they to, you know what, it's okay. They can do whatever they, they want to do because I, I am a powerful creator. What do I want to create instead? Once we stop the blame game and we stop pointing out there and those wars, how terrible. Once we stop that, we enter into the place where what do I prefer to experience instead? When it is no longer done from wanting, what can I get? What can I use my mind? How many millions can I create? How, what a, a big mansion. Once you are clear that there's nothing that can be added on to you. Once you know your perfection, your wholeness, the only desire that makes sense is desire to extend, to share, to give. And that's when you begin to allow the love of God to move, flow through you. That's unconditional love because now all the conditions fall away once you come to the place that you realize that the only way you can sustain feeling good consistently is through being the loving being that you are. When that registers into your mind, it becomes so much easier to surrender 
to the moments when God says, all right, it's time for us to merge. And that merging is really not because God is saying, okay, Lina, you need a little help and we need, we need to give you some information. That's not it. What happens is that in that merger, you have attained the highest possible place of surrender while in physical form so that your form can be used by God to extend the kingdom of heaven. Because then you become the loving being that anybody around you can feel not judged, can feel accepted, can actually feel a little glimpse of the potential that's their birthright. And as humanity continues to move further and further into this incredible, crazy time of war, the activation of World War III, which, which is, is, is time. It's time for World War III. And it's time because humanity needs to wake up and it needs something massive and major to startle it out of its sleepiness. And all, all that awakening is, is the realization that we are powerful creators and we can choose to co-create from love instead of fear. And that, that is only possible when you realize that wars only activate fear. And it's always the same ones that start the wars. Isn't that interesting? And it's always the same ones that start the wars that somehow get the billions of dollars that get allocated for wars. When the mind begins to become a logical tool, when you begin to see what is happening, you begin to see that those whose minds are so conditioned into separation in their box, they have decided that they are the bigger box and everybody else has to fit in their box. They become the, the controllers. They become the bullies. Everybody else who is not connected to the truth of who they are, then wants the ones with the guns to protect them because they don't want to be on the other side of the guns. So that's where humanity gives their power to the police state, to the, the controlling, um, whoever controls the army, that's where the majority wants to side with thinking that keeps me safe. But because the ego doesn't operate in safety, the ego doesn't operate in sharing, the ego only thinks of itself. It is selfish, it is greedy, and it is a liar. When you begin to understand that aspect of yourself, look at how long you've been lying to yourself, telling yourself that the outer world is real. Look at how long you operate in lack and are just trying to get a little piece of the pie. All along, you're an infinite creator. That's a lie that we've been telling ourselves. The greatest betrayal that we will ever, ever have to face is the betrayal of the lie that we told ourselves. When we become the, the, the living example of the lie, that is when you're totally, completely under the trance of the ego. I mean, completely. To wake up somebody who thinks that the ones with the guns are their protectors, it requires for those guns to be turned on them. And we are right now, humanity is observing as we watch what's happening in Canada, as we watch what's happening in Australia, what's happening in, in the you know, uh, Ukraine and, and Russia, all over the world, actually. And you begin to see that the very people who say that they're protecting you are the very ones who are making it very difficult for you to be yourself. That's when you begin to see, oh my goodness, that gun can be turned on me. Look at Canada. When your government that you think gives you permission or protects you so that you can express yourself as God intended you to, to express yourself, now calls you a terrorist because you are peacefully marching those guns are being turned on you, only they're not using the guns yet. They're using the, the law, the legislation to activate more fear, to make you more compliant. But we are, we are pulling out of that, that story. Not only is it old, it, we've done it so many times. We've done thousands of lifetimes with that story. It is boring. There is no joy in that story anymore. There is no room for creativity. 
There, there is absolutely no, no fun left in that story. We have sucked out all the juice out of the cops and robber story. Now, the only thing that will excite us is to remember that we are the creators of this reality. And the, the most powerful thing that we have is a mind that can imagine something new. We need to move out of this box. We will not find what we're looking for in the box. The box is designed to block us from what we want. This is why humanity has to recognize the connection of all of our minds. Because when we, when we get clear that the mind has two voices, the voice of God, which is the natural voice that a child hears and gives it its activation of imagination, no child learns how to imagine from anybody. There is not a single parent who would be so arrogant and obviously ignorant to state that they taught their child how to imagine that, that you're not going to hear that because imagination is our natural state of creation, infinite creation. It's how God extends the kingdom. And when imagination is coupled with love, it extends with the desire for the greater good of all. But when imagination is stifled by greed, it is it's coupled with a desire for the greater good for me. So we are observing that some of us are seeing, wait, how is this for the greater good of all? This only helps the few. That awareness is not intended to be used to judge and say, oh, you bad people, we're going to get rid of you, even though some will. But if your consciousness is higher, your consciousness if you're going to be merging with God's consciousness, you are here to extend the kingdom of heaven to them too, to thank them, to recognize that they are doing a role. They're playing a part. They have been imagined in the mind of God, which means that if they have been imagined in the mind of God, they have a role to play in the imagination. You know, it's no different than when an artist Let's, let's go to a, a, a playwright is imagining a script for a movie and they are, they, they've got all the characters. They've got it all worked out in their imagination is the good ones, the bad ones, the, the ones that will be sacrificed and will be killed in the movie. The ones who will be um, the, the actors doing things like the servers at the restaurant or the people standing in line waiting um, at the dealership or whatever it might be, the cop, the, the wife, the child, all of those characters come to the mind of the one who has the vision for that movie. And as you see, you know, art imitates life. You're always imagining things that are, that are, that you've experienced. You cannot imagine something you haven't, you don't have a glimpse of that is possible, not as a human. God can imagine what's never been, but because God is all that's ever been, what it's imagining is what is, and then it expands from there. We cannot imagine anything we haven't experienced, which is why we have to tap into the mind of God so that we can remember other aspects of ourselves because everything, all that isness is all that isness right now. There are layers and layers and layers, multi layers to reality. And we are, we are living all of those layers at one time. We have to be, we can't be, um, we cannot not be what we are all the time. So as we merge with God and tap into that one mind that knows all the moving pieces, that the script is written as A Course in Miracles is already saying, that mind begins to give us access to the potential of what would be greater than the box that we have been in and have been defending as reality. So tapping into that greater aspect of ourselves and greater, not because we're lesser, but we are using less of our mind. The greater aspect of ourselves is an infinite mind. And when we recognize that that infinite mind is a loving, loving mind, it is benevolent, it creates purely for the joy of the experience. 
That loving mind does not judge what we're doing when we contract because that is possible in the game. Because if you're in the mind of God, this is why you don't die. Your soul cannot die. But your character can experience a death experience. That's written into this play. Just as an actor acts out that they got killed on the movie set, but then they walk off the movie set. Why didn't that actor, wait a second, why didn't they shoot that actor? How, how come that person didn't really die? Because they're acting out a part. Our soul is acting out a part of Lina. So on this stage called planet Earth, Lina will have a death experience as people in Ukraine or in Russia or in Canada or in the United States have a death experience. But the soul is eternal. To get out of the box, we have to cultivate a relationship with that eternal soul. We have to know that we're not just our bodies because one of the most important steps on this journey is to, to release our attachments to the outer world because how else are you going to drop the box until you stop being attached to it? And the box is comprised by all of the things that we have been conditioned to think we need to have to be safe. We need to have to be okay. We need to have a choir so that people can see that we are successful. Money, status, things, um, uh, positions, spouses, all those things. Everything that sends us outside of ourselves to get our, get our sense of worth must be dropped. It is not, you can't take it where we're going because we're going to a realm of all that isness. You don't need a suitcase with a few human things when you are in the freedom of all that isness. You know why? Because you don't even feel your body when you're in, in that state of all that isness. Your imagination activates and you imagine so much, so much more that is grander, that is not possible. So the glimpses that I was getting of this new earth that we can co-create is just absolutely mind-blowing. But that, that new earth is co-created by us. We bring imagination into human experience. We have to make it real for us. It's in our imagination so that we, as the magicians of this game, can bring it into manifestation. And as it becomes manifestation, we then say, oh, that's a nice box. That's better. I like that better. And when the mind is no longer selfish and all about me, playing on planet Earth in a much bigger box that probably won't have too many edges, eventually you have no edges, sharing, you know, everybody caring for one another is part of it. But we have to let go of those beliefs that we got conditioned to think, oh, somebody's taking care of you, then you're a loser. What, somebody's giving you food? Then, then you must be homeless or you, there must be, you, you didn't achieve enough. So all of those thoughts about receiving, all of those thoughts about status and what defines you, we have to transcend them. We have to end the trance that those thoughts put us in because they put us in a box. And, you know, if you saw the movie, The Matrix, you understand what I'm talking about. We have to unplug. We have to unplug from the system that is sucking our, our creativity by making us repeat, regurgitate the same old crap that gives us, you know, the same old stuff. And we think we're going to get a different result. So the unplugging of The Matrix is the deciding to not think that you know it all. And it's the deciding to be humble enough to say, God, what would you have me do? Because we have free will. God will not override our will because God loves us enough to say, you'll come whenever you want to come. When you're done with that game, you will come and say, what else is there? But until we are clear that we're not done with the game, we're not open to God because we become our own God, ego edging God out. And when we think that we know it all, we are simply delaying the possibility of the very thing that gives us access to the very life, the very everything that we, our heart desires. 
So I want to go into lesson 19, because when we understand, and I've never found anything that puts it as simple as the course does, when we understand that we're not alone in experiencing the effects of our thoughts, that means that my thinking affects everything. And my thinking and your thinking and everybody else's thinking is actually the same. When it comes from our soul, it is about sharing. When it comes from our ego, it's about what can I get and protect. When it comes from our soul, that thinking is about expansion. From our soul, it's about contraction. When it comes from our soul, we recognize that freedom, freedom is, is part of who we are. We are free to use our mind any way that we want. And when your mind wants to do medicine a certain way or wants to do life a certain way or wants to do your body um, tattoo it or whatever you want to do it a certain way, you want 100% freedom. The mind that is operating with the ego has made ego its God operates from fear. And that's why it has to have control, whether it's controlling another or giving up its power to be controlled by another. When we acquiesce to somebody taking care of us, we say you are an authority over us. Of course, a miracle says that there's only one problem. One problem would solve everything. So because there's one problem, there's one solution. And that solution is to discover who is your authority. Who's your daddy? We really got to get clear. Who's your daddy? Your real daddy, your real mommy. We've got to get to the place that we humble ourselves before the creative source and know that we didn't create ourselves. And no, we did not just come from a, you know, an egg and a sperm. That's a very simplistic story. Yes, in human form, it's the process by which we arrive. But before that egg and that sperm come together and create the potential of you, what created that egg and that sperm? Where did that come from? Well, that's the creation of God. That's the creation of the intelligence that makes it possible for us to show up. So we've got to go beyond what we think is true and expand into the realms of something that has never been here before because we don't want the same thing anymore. We've got to get clear that we're tired and bored and done with the same treadmill that we've been on. So my experience with the divine was divine, sublime, absolutely amazing. So I know that I am being called into helping people activate their Christ consciousness. It's, it's happened to me. It's what this journey has brought me to experience. And if I can do it, anybody can. There's nothing special about this. There's absolutely nothing special about um, accessing consciousness. Actually, it's the simplest, easiest thing I've ever done. What was difficult was removing all the blocks and the barriers that I had built to all the excuses and the reasons why I can't have that. Most of them taught to me by the church and then continued to be professed by parents and, and teachers and government and all of that in their own ignorance. So we cannot be arrogant and think we know it all because we don't know nothing. And that is the portal to all that could possibly ever solve the problems of the world. So when people are talking, gossiping about what's happening and gossiping is talking about, did you see this? Did you watch the media? Did you see what he did? Did you see what Putin did? Did you see what Biden did? Did you see what Trump didn't do or said or blah, 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 blah. When we're talking about what everybody else out there is doing, we are not allowing ourselves to look at it through the eyes of God. When we can see what's happening and we can go, oh, wow, that one is in their ego. That one is really pushing separation. That one's really pushing control. That being needs prayer. Then you begin because all minds are joined to say, beloved brother, sister, I'm going to pray for you. You don't remember the truth of who you are. That's why you're trying to control those people. Or you don't remember the truth of who you are. That's why you're being controlled. When what is out there becomes information about are people in their head or are they in their heart? When you can keep it that simple, so it's neutral, so it's not right or wrong, it's just a fact, then you begin to desire for them 
what happened to you. Oh my gosh, it's so much more peaceful when you access love. And that becomes the prayer that is going to uplift all of humanity because it's a prayer that doesn't judge. And because it doesn't judge, it has the power to extend a vibration that when that person who is in, in being controlled or controlling, when you say a prayer for them, that frequency is like ripples in the ocean. You throw a pebble in the ocean and the ripples are going to come out. That ripple of frequency is going to touch them. They will feel it. It, it will be a slight, oh my goodness, you know, what am I doing? It'll be a slight inspiration. It'll be a person giving them a smile changing their day. We don't know how it's going to happen, but the creative source knows that when more of us band together, only takes one of us, but now the numbers are growing. To send out ripples of love, they have the effect of cleansing, cleansing what has been dense up until now. So look at what's happening in the world to inform you, is it a call for love or do you see love in action? And once you're clear that it is a call for love, send love because that is what you have to activate within yourself so that you can see how loving you are. And when you can feel the love that you have by sharing it, you literally are bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth because now you are part of the only solution that will fix anything. And that is remembering who the true authority is. And God created us to extend love, to bring love and light to the planet. A selfish mind cannot do that because it's all about me. A mind that has made peace, that there is not only more than enough, not only is this an abundant world, not only are you already whole, perfect, and complete, when you're no longer seeking, you will do nothing but giving. It is a given that extending is what will happen. There can be no other way because there is no other way. So I want to share um, a little bit from this lesson. And for everybody that came in a little later, I want to share that I am going to come up with a different way of doing these classes so that it can reach more people. I don't know if I'm going to do it as a live on Instagram or a live on YouTube, but doing it on Zoom and then posting it, it's not translating to people finding it, to people joining us. And I have been, it's very clear last night, I was told you've got to make it easy for people to understand that they are the Christ and for them to experience Christ's way and the awakening that is necessary is through information like this. So, um, Yes. Oh, yes, you were switching. Absolutely. No problems. So let me just share a little bit from this. And then I want to hear from you. How are you experiencing that Christ consciousness in your life as you continue your studies of A Course in Miracles? So I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my thoughts. Lesson 19. The idea for today is obviously the reason why your seeing does not affect you alone. You will notice that at times, the ideas related to thinking precede those related to perceiving, while at, at other times, the order is reversed. So let's talk about those two things. We think, we believe that we are thinking a thought, and then we perceive a situation. At other times, we perceive a situation and then think a thought. So for example, we're watching what's happening in Russia. We see somebody get hurt. That is what we perceive immediately. We are thinking that's who did it. They shouldn't have done it. Who, what side are they on? Immediately the thinking gets connected to the perception, having you uh, create a relationship with that experience from your ego, because the thing out there informs your thoughts in here. When we got conditioned as children and we got conditioned to believe that we have to have an army, that that's how we stay safe and we pay our taxes and the taxes cover the military, we were thinking and then we perceived the war. Then we went to war. So the mind that gets trained 
into believing something is true and acceptable, we'll eventually perceive it. And what happens is over time, we keep perceiving it out there, not realizing that it came in here. Nobody attacked another before first thinking, I need to protect myself. Clearly somebody who's not in alignment with knowing their eternal ness. So we have got to get clear that we can't keep perceiving what is there and letting it create our thinking because we are creative beings. We need to think what we want to see. And if you see war, instead of judging it and going, that's not good, that's not bad, this one started it, that one did it, come to the mind that is joined with all minds and saying, brother, sisters, I know you don't want this. God, what would you have me do? Because we need to change our thinking about that thing. And judging it is to perceive the thing outside as having power over you. Oh, yeah, that's terrible. It's happening. That thing is happening. Well, it's only happening because it was first a thought projected out and we all perceived it as true. And over the years, we are lazy. We perceive it and then, oh, yeah, it's true. I see it. It's happening. But it never would have happened if you didn't think that it was okay. So there's so much to learn about how the mind works. So let me keep going. The reason is that the order doesn't matter. If you see it out there or it starts in here, the mind that got conditioned, it, it doesn't matter. Thinking and its results are really simultaneous. The cause and effect are never separated. Isn't that amazing? So as long as you are thinking that there is a war out there, you are going to experience a war out there. The cause that permits wars to be okay is what gives you the evidence that wars are, are okay. And we go through a process of saying, no, war is not okay. That's the beginning stages of the process of, of awakening. It's, it's a recognition that doesn't feel good anymore. So that process of moving back causes us to judge that thing. I don't like it. That is an important step. I don't like it. But the next step is what do I want instead? And for those of you that are here that I know really well, I've coached you for many years. You've attended my classes for many years. I know you. You are at a place in consciousness that you need to stop looking at what is out there and judging it and thinking it is bad, thinking, oh, poor people. You are one whose consciousness is being cleaned up from the egoic debris, purifying your mind so that you can begin to hold the thought of what you prefer firmly in your mind so that that, that, that you are thinking causes the effect you want to be seeing. This is why it's very, very difficult to move past the spiritualized ego because we think, oh my God, I'm spiritual. We shouldn't have war. It's okay for me to judge the war. We are spiritual. We are all liberals. We all are kumbaya, let everybody be happy. Well, except for these people that need to do this thing so that I get to be safe. It's very difficult to overcome your spiritual ego if you don't make the decision that you want to think with God's mind instead of your small mind. Because the cause and the effect are one. When God thinks about me, the effect of Lina is at the same time. If God stops thinking about me, I cease to be Lina. I cease to be the essence that is expressing as Lina. It is the, the, the two happen simultaneously. That's why when God thinks, imagines all the potentials, the contracted ego is existing inside of the same mind that is creating through the desire of the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's infinite. So all these other possibilities of what will have us co-create a happy dream cannot come to a mind that is pointing at what is thinking that's all there is. Because if that's all there is, you're in a very small box and you're only seeing one tiny speck of the infinite possibilities. So we have to train ourselves to see what is neutrally, no judgment, and then get clear what would your heart want instead. We are moving out of the conditioning. The wars have to happen 
They're scripted in so that we will say no more, but they will not go away if we judge them. They only disappear when we, when we choose something different. We cannot keep pointing at what we don't want and have it go away because the pointing to the what we don't want holds it in that frequency so that we can be right about what we don't want. And I know that sounds like a clusterfuck, but the mind is very, very uh, powerful. And the ego is so insidious. Simplicity doesn't arrive until you're thinking with God. The ego is very, very convoluted. It is absolutely a mess. The red tape in the mind is crazy. So we got to pull these ideas, these thoughts one by one. That's why as you observe what is, write down all those thoughts. It shouldn't be happening. Look at what he did. Look at what she did. They shouldn't have sent the money. They should have sent more money. They shouldn't have done this. They shouldn't have done that. They should do this. And you will come up with thousands of thoughts that you're having about what is there holding it as your reality. You can't come to the creative place to imagine. It's like a painter who paints a painting. They don't like it and say, well, I don't like this. No, I don't like it. I want something different, but I don't like it. If they don't take the time to clean the canvas, to wipe it down, they can't create something new. You have to choose. Are you going to keep looking at what is and making it your reality or use your imagination to access a new reality? And that new reality will get co-created with all the ones whose minds are joined in that new reality. Let me go to paragraph number two. So today we are again emphasizing the fact that minds are joined. This is rarely a wholly welcomed idea at first since it seems to carry with it an enormous sense of responsibility and may even be regarded as an invasion of privacy. What? We're all thinking the same thing? No, I don't. I think different things. I have my own thoughts and nobody knows my thoughts. Well, I've been coaching for co almost two decades. Everybody has the same thoughts. I'm afraid. What can I get? What's mine? What's theirs? I like that one. I don't like that one. We all think the same things. No, nobody has different thoughts. I've yet to meet a single person that had, that's in their ego, that has a different idea. The outside experience may look different, but the inside insecurities are all the same. The inside lies, the inside corruption of the mind, it's all the same. Because you don't know who you are. So you think the same thing. I'm not who I am. So what must I be? Give me more of that. Give me more money. Give me more status everybody has the exact same thoughts. Yet, it is a fact that there are no private thoughts. Despite your initial resistance to this idea, you will yet understand that it must be true if salvation is possible at all. Salvation is to spare yourself of the insanity. It's all salvation means in A Course in Miracles. Save yourself from yourself. Save those people from your ego mind. Spare them your egoic thoughts. And salvation must be possible because it is the will of God. God created us free, not to be bound in boxes. But if we choose to go into a box, God lets us go there till we're done playing in the dark. Just like with my little kids. They went outside and they played. When they were young, they played around the neighborhood. And guess what? When it started to get dark and scary, they came home. Right now, the world is getting darker and scarier because more of us can see that we don't want more of that. Now, what is the, the, the work necessary? What do we want instead? Because minds are joined. Let's join with the, the creative uh, correction not with the reorganizing of the insanity and expect a different result. Einstein gave us a brilliance. Paragraph number uh, three. So this is a lesson. This is what you would do for the day that you would read this lesson. So the minute or so of mind searching, which today's exercises require, is to be undertaken with your eyes closed. The idea for today is to be repeated first 
And then the mind should be carefully searched for the thoughts it contains at that time. Take it, we're learning to take an inventory of what's in the mind. As you consider each one, name it in terms of the central person or theme it contains and holding it in your mind as you do say, I am not alone in experiencing the effects of this thought about Ukraine. You're not alone. We're all having the same thoughts, but are the thoughts coming from the head, the ego conditioning, or are they coming from the heart, which is not conditioned at all? It's, it's, it's unconditioned, it's, un, it's unwritten, it wants to be created. You cannot feed the ego and feed the soul at the same time. You've got to pick the one that you are going to strengthen, like the story of the, the Cherokee Indian talking about the two wolves, the white wolf that expresses the soul, the, the black wolf that expresses the ego. Which one survives? The one that you feed. Plain and simple. The next paragraph says that the requirement of as, as much, the, the requirement um, of as much indiscriminateness as possible in selecting subjects for the practice period should be quite familiar to you by now and will no longer be repeated each day, although it will occasionally be included as a reminder. So we are in lesson 19. This is referring to, we. you've done already so many other lessons. By the way, I've recorded all 365 lessons. I have a course with the 365 lessons on my website. For purchase, you can access it all the, anytime you want to, lifetime, and it will, I read the lessons, I explain what the lessons mean, and if you know of anybody who's interested in the course, please share that with them, um, because it is such a powerful experience when you are with those lessons by yourself and somebody's explaining them to you that understands them, has lived them, has used them. It's just really, I break it down. I make it simple. I make it easy to apply. Do not forget, however, that random selections of subjects for all practice periods remain essential throughout. That means make sure you look at all the different thoughts that you have. Don't just always focus on the divorce or the loss of the job or the war. Look at all your thoughts because that's how you're going to see how they're all coming from the same mind that is scared. All of those roads lead to fear, plain and simple. And people say, oh, and I'm not feeling fear. I'm feeling, um, you know, left out, but that's not fear. Well, you can call it that, but it all comes to fear. It all, it all works its way to fear. Most people don't want to say they're afraid. Um, I know I did, but it all comes from fear. Ultimately, the fear, the greatest fear is that you're afraid that God's going to be upset with you because you have been blocking it. But God doesn't care that you're blocking it. Because God will just keep imagining more people that will come and help you remember to unblock. And God will keep bringing more light to the planet, and more people who will incarnate that give us more opportunities to, to plant the seeds of the truth that liberates everybody, which is what's happening on the planet. God has been making sure that lots of souls that want to come and help uplift the planet got to be born to be here at this time to help uplift the planet. So you're not, you cannot stop God's plan, but you can keep yourself in a box and miserable all the while God's plan is unfolding. It's fascinating. So the, the last part here is um, apart from the as needed application of today's idea, at least Three practice periods are required, shortening the length of time involved if necessary, but don't attempt to do it more than three times. Don't go to four or don't, don't go beyond four. The most important thing here is you don't have private thoughts. Let go of thinking you have private thoughts and nobody knows your thoughts. We all have the same thoughts. We just convince ourselves that our thoughts are special and different and nobody will understand just about it. Well, every person I've ever coached from the beginning of the coaching, that is always something that comes up. Well, I'm so glad that I can talk to you because you understand me. Nobody else would understand. Well, nobody else understands you because they don't understand that they have the same thoughts that you do. But once we all understand that we have the same thoughts, they come from the head or the heart, they come from ego and conditioning, or they come from the heart that is uh, pure and innocent. We all have the same thoughts. 
when we're in our heart, we all want life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness because we're all equal. That's why that got written into the constitution. Why? Because God knew we need somebody who will bring the message of truth. Like we needed somebody who would bring the message of truth and Jesus came and we needed a messenger of truth and Buddha came and Gandhi came. How many fucking people do we need to come and tell us the same thing until we acknowledge that they're all saying the same thing? Don't think your own thoughts by yourself if they're blocking love. How many more messengers do we need? Well, as many as are required because the ego is thick. It's, it's, a, it's stubborn, it's righteous, and it wants to be right about how horrible things are. Well, guess what? You're thinking how horrible things are. What is horrible is your reality. You cannot create a different reality while you hold that reality as the reality. You're anchored to that. Think about it this way. Your favorite dessert is over here. And your least favorite food is to your left. And you know you want the dessert on the right. You're never going to taste the dessert on the right if you stand on the left complaining about the food that is there that you don't like. Oh my God, who cooked this? Who made this? I don't like this. This is terrible. What, what did they use? How long has it been sitting here? It's too expensive. It's too this. It's too that. I don't like it. I don't like it. Move to where the dessert is. Go get the freaking dessert and enjoy it. It's as simple as that. Stop thinking about what you don't want. Stop pointing at the problem because you are the you are contributing to it becoming, staying, remaining your reality. It is the withdrawal of that conversation or being in it completely neutral, not trying to fix anybody, not feeling sorry for anybody, but recognizing I don't want that. I have a lot of talks with people about the war. And my comment is, it's, it's not my reality. It's not affecting me. I don't lose sleep over the war. Those are all characters doing what they're doing because that's the way the script is written. I am grateful that they're playing the role that is helping more people see that they don't want war. I'm over here eating cake with the people who want to learn how to co-create a new reality. And they want to change their thinking about that. We all think the same thing from the head. We all think the same thing from the heart. If you keep looking at what you don't like, what you don't like stays fixed. If you want what things to change, then change the way you look at things. I'm repeating what Wayne Dyer gets credit for, but he picked that up from a wise man called Patanjali. And Patanjali probably picked it up from the Buddha. And the Buddha probably picked it up from, you know, Krishna and Krishna picked it up from who knows where we are really we are billions of years old all the good ideas didn't come from people on this planet as a matter of fact they were dropped onto this planet by beings that were beyond this insanity and they entered through the minds that were open and willing to receive something new and then we thought oh my god what a brilliant thing they said they didn't say anything brilliant they spoke truth but to experience truth and let it set you free, you've got to turn on your brilliance. Be brilliant enough to know you don't know it all. Humble enough to admit, all right, let me go beyond my conditioning. God, what would you have me know? And then sit in stillness. Quiet the mind. Learn. It's a process. It took me a long time to quiet the mind. But when you stop judging, the mind quiets itself. That's the secret. There's no other secret sauce. Stop judging. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. It's what was given to me to share today and that is it. So for next time, I got to find a new way for us to connect. I will let you know because you guys that are here are all on, on the same um, messaging thread. So you will know. And uh, until then, I am just so grateful that you guys give me this opportunity. This is, this is our 52nd week. To come together. So a year of doing this, my God, it feeds my soul knowing that we're going to connect and this is what's going to happen. So with that, I want to open it up and I want to hear from you. Kat, I love seeing your beautiful face. 
Did you get some nuggets today, sweetie? Wait, wait, let's unmute you, honey. There we there go. We go. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I, I definitely did. Um, and in, <clears throat> in, uh, my, in my meditation and in my prayer, uh, I've, I've gone more into prayer than meditation. I found just that's just what's happening. And in my, in my, that quiet time, I am envisioning what I want. I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning things for my daughter, things for both my, for the world, for, for, for every, for, for every sentient being everywhere. And peace is the, peace is the bottom line. And um, so I've gotten that. Uh, from this course, from the course, and I'm from the course in love too, really. So uh, I'm enjoying that, and I I realize how much I do judge. Uh, just I'm like this latest thing I know with Marjorie Taylor Greene. So it's a political thing, um, you know. Um, I'm like, I'm just going to let go of all judgment around that, all judgment around that. And just, it is what it is, let it be. And that's, I'd also found in my relationship with uh, John, I'm, I'm utilizing it there and I'm finding so much more happiness and peace in that relationship um, because I just, I allow him to be, he's in, I don't allow anything really, <laughs> but my ego, I, 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 I do my very, very best to check my ego with him, <clears throat> which, so anyway, I, I'm using this course every day, every day. And in, in so many relationships, you know, with my family and with my friends and with the organizations I'm a part of. And, um, um, I, I'm using, my, I'm, I'm really focused on spreading light, being a light being. I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on that so that when I, I can bring light to a situation as best I can and not get caught up into the drama, which is already happening in a, one of the groups and is fighting within the group and like, oh my gosh. So you just have to let go, let go and let God. And, um, but that, that part of it that I love is that I'm visualizing what I want to see not what I'm fear not not the stuff I don't want I'm but this has been such a gift to me such a wonderful gift so I I thank you very much and um I can never thank you enough well I cannot thank you enough for being such a uh an open recipient because you know it's hard to plant seeds in in concrete it takes a lot of work to chip that concrete away. And I've, I've tried to do that with many people that I love that I pushed away because I was trying to chip away. <laughs> that seed in there. But you've always been fertile uh, soil for these seeds, which is why, you know, you're experiencing such big changes. But I don't know about what you're talking about with um, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, but suffice it to say, it doesn't matter what it is. When you see the situation and the mind starts to, to have an opinion, what you want to do is just simply switch it to what would love do? What, what would love do in, in this situation? What would love, how can love blossom here? And just train your mind just to go to the love part for a very long time, um, we hear that we stop judging, stop judging, but the judging doesn't stop until the loving starts because it is the, the focus on love that activates that frequency that then you're not caught up in the judging. So you cannot just not judge, you go to the call for love and then let your mind get creative about where can you send the love? You know, yes, the prayers, Meditation and prayers become all one and the same. The more we advance on this journey, we realize, oh, it's really the same thing. Because a prayer that comes from a quiet mind is a prayer for the greater good of all. Always is. It's always a loving prayer. 
It's only when the mind is busy, we have to learn to quiet it. So we need the meditation because the prayers are all, oh my God, I need more money. I need more of this. Send me that. Why didn't you do? Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It gets crazy in there. Huh. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Love hearing that. Thank you. Anybody else? Did you come from Thank you. Yes. I, I want to say something. Yes. This is Jody. Please. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Um, thank you so much for today. Um, sorry, I'm out of breath. Um, I just want to share that it's what I love the most about what you shared. Well, I loved your beautiful meditation and you, the, where you went. It was so powerful. Um, mm -hmm. Also, the um, focusing on what you want and not seeing what you don't want is so powerful what a great reminder and I love that you just said um um I can't remember the verbiage you used but then you said but when you focus on love you added that caveat the other goes away um when you're trying to, I guess it was when you're trying not to judge was that what you were saying exactly if you go for the dessert you can't be complaining about the the veggie that you don't like yeah yeah exactly and so when I realized I had this uh, epiphany um, because I was actually painting while, while we were doing this. And what I realized I had in the ha moment, because I remember when we were coaching years ago, you would have me get up and walk towards what I don't want and then turn around and walk towards what I do want. And I realized painting and imagining a prettier space, I'm organically doing that. And I was like, wow, it just hit me today. Cause I always, you, you, you know, I was always focused on, oh, this doesn't look right. Or I don't know how to do the, you know, all this. And I'm like, what do I want? And I'm, and I'm focused on what I want and I know it's small, but it's, that's not the point. It's just that I'm, I'm joyful and I'm so happy because what you're sharing is what I'm experiencing. And it's, it's so validating. So um, thank you. Absolutely. And, you know, we are moving towards a dimension of living a happy dream where whatever brings us joy is what we will want to share. It will become natural. Whether we open up a store to place all those things or you put it on your front porch and somebody goes by, wow, that's amazing. It is going to be shared. If it's high frequency, it is meant to be shared. So we are going to, all of us, be totally and completely taken care of. All of our needs are going to be met when we are doing the thing that we love doing because it is going to be shared because it will be for the greater good of all. The systems are, we are, we are witnessing a transition. We're literally witnessing the moment where it's the birth and and we're witnessing right before the birth, before you hold a beautiful baby, the mother, every one of you who has given birth to a child or been there to witness the birth of a child, you know, the baby in the belly. Oh, how sweet. Look at the sweet belly and everybody touching the belly, the baby outside of the that's been born. Oh, how cute. You're holding it between the baby in the gestation period and the the baby that you hold it is a very painful ugly transition it is messy it requires everything to get turned upside down you got to pull the the new out of the old the old body of the mother the new baby comes out of it well the new that we all want is it, it's right or has always been in this new earth in in, in this earth and that is to pull forth that which is innocent, which is fresh, which is new. What that means is we need to give room to the children to tell us what they want. The children should be the ones writing all of our political policies. <laughs> Everything that we want, a child knows because it's going to be fun. It's going to be easy. It's going to be playful. It's going to be for the greater good of all. But the greed in us, the old body that is, that is birthing this new way, is so important that we honor the lessons that it has taught us. So when you watch the war, it's just teaching us we don't want to keep doing it that way. But it's going to be messy until the new emerges because the new requires an incredible amount of courage to, to bring forth something that hasn't been there before. The seed has always been there. We need to focus on it so we can tend to it. 
Are we going to cultivate the new medical system instead of complaining about the old one? Can we then just start finding those new um, holistic doctors and only go to them? Can we start uh, co-creating the new education system? Can we be the new political system? That is going to be where the happy dream is co-created, is in our attention to it. There is no, no good that will come from judging the old because it keeps it real. It keeps it real in our awareness and it gives, we give it power to observe it in neutrality and be clear. Oh my God, I am done with this. Did you see what they said about Marjorie Taylor Greene or what she did? I'm done with that. What do I want instead? Go to your heart. What do I want instead? Then begin to look for who is birthing that, who is the one that is standing up for that. You support that conversation. You feed that conversation. You fertilize that conversation because we will have to see in the outer world validation of what we want because our minds are not quite yet to the point that we know we create it all. So we have to see it. To see the validation, to then begin to feel good about it, you need to begin to give it attention. Give the imagination permission to imagine the new. Thank you so much for that, Jody. I'm so glad that you're painting and having fun. Um, the world needs more of that. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri. So glad that you were here and you joined us. And you'll get the message um, of where we will connect next week. If you don't already have Instagram, make sure you um, be open to the possibility that that may be where we connect um, or YouTube. Uh, so that I'll do it as a YouTube live. And then that way, everybody that follows me on YouTube will know that it's live and they can join there. So I'll get all that figured out this week and we'll go from there next week. So same time next week, just it might be a different link and um, it'll be easy. Anybody else wanted to share anything? Yes, Crystal. Can you get me? And here, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I certainly laughed when you said, how many more teachers do we need to say the same thing in different ways? Um, that was so funny to me to recognize that that's actually what's been happening. That there's been so many teachers saying the same thing, but in different ways and different nuances. And because um, that's what I've referenced in my studies is that, you know, there's so many that have said these same truths. And that's been so amazing, you know. And then the other thing that you said when you were responding to, to Kat, you said about the seeds that you've been, you've been trying to nurture in concrete. And I had visions of so many plants growing out of concrete that I've seen uh, and out of stone that when they're ready to germinate, they crack that concrete and they crack the stone. And I've always been amazed at the power of creation when it really wants to push out. Nothing will stop it from its coming to its true awareness. And that's um, such a uh, tremendous reminder that there's no wasting of teaching and sharing with people because the seed will germinate in its right time. And yes. um, yeah, so that's, yeah. That's and so I'm many, talking. so many people, their hearts have hardened, but those seeds have been planted and they mm -hmm. will crack open. So thank you for that beautiful visual. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. And um, when, once the video comes out, please share it. Put it on your Facebook page or put it wherever and share pe with people where you're getting inspiration. All right, everybody. Love you all so much. See you next Love week. Love you too. Bye-bye. Have -bye. a great Bye. week. Bye. Thank you, Lena. Thank you, everybody. You are welcome, sweetie. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye. Loads Love of love. Bye. <laughs>